Hey guys, it's Bartell's Bookshelf here with a very special Halloween book haul for spooky season. Um, today, uh, October 30th, uh, as sort of a pre-Halloween celebration, me and a few friends went down to San Francisco to a couple of independent bookstores to get some books. And uh, I came back with quite a few. Uh, I've got 31 books here to show you. <laughs> Um, we went to two stores, well, three stores technically, but we went to two stores in San Francisco. We went to um, this one place called Borderlands Books that specializes specifically in horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. Um, this was the main reason we came. We decided to show up here. Um, it was a pretty cool bookstore, as you can see. Um, they had a pretty varied selection. Unfortunately, their used section was pretty skint. Um, pretty scant, I should say, sorry. Um, there was a... Uh, there was like two horror shelves and uh, maybe like one or f three or four fantasy shelves in terms of used books and that was about it and everything else is being sold for new prices but there was some cool stuff I found a few interesting things that I didn't buy but one of the things that I ran across was for example this um, box set of uh, the gore novels they actually had a whole bunch of gore novels I haven't read any of these but of course I've heard a lot about them and then we went to a bookstore that was just down the street called dog-eared books um, this place we didn't spend as much time in because uh, it wasn't quite um, what we were looking for. Um, it was mostly li literary stuff, um, nonfiction, art books, that kind of thing. And they did have a horror section, but as you can see here, it's like the smallest, most pathetic horror section I've ever seen in my life. But I did buy a couple things here that I'll show you eventually. And then at the end of the day, we decided to stop off at our usual haunt, um, Half Price Books, where I actually got even more vintage horror stuff, which I'll, I'm very excited to show you here. So, let's get into it. I've got over 30 books here, so this might take a while. Firstly, I have two uh, paperback horror books here from a very well-regarded uh, horror author of the period. I have Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. Um, this was uh, published in 1987. This was sort of his version of The Stand. I mean, it wasn't really... It's not, it, people accused it of being a ripoff, but really from what I've heard, it stands, oh, get it, stands, it stands on its own. Um, and I was really happy to find this version because this is the uh, Pocket Books edition with this beautiful cover art by Rowena Morrill, um, who did all of the art, uh, cover art for Robert McCammon's uh, Pocket Books editions during this time period. Um, this is a big boy, over, over 900 pages, so I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but I, I have it now, and I'm very happy to have it, especially this edition. And uh, I also got <clears throat> Stinger by Robert R. McCammon. Uh, this is uh, sort of his take on an alien invasion story, sort of a 1950s-ish alien, alien invasion thing, but taking place in the 80s. And again, it has that beautiful cover art by Rowena Morrill. Shout out, Rowena Morrill. Love that. That's really, really awesome. I was really happy to find these. Especially because uh, I already had a couple Pocket Books editions of McCammon's stuff. I have... Um, the Wolf Sour and They Thirst. So now I've got even more here, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully I can get more in the future. I got quite a few <clears throat> leisure books here, leisure horror books. Um, I, I collected a bunch of these a few years ago, but now that I've joined uh, Wands Plagued by Visions Discord, I've been collecting a lot more. Um, it's kind of sad because they were sort of the last gasp of the paperback horror boom. They shut down in 2010, I believe. There's a lot of financial issues, authors not being paid, that kind of thing. Really was sort of the end of an era. But I found a bunch, and I'll show them to you now. The first one here is Covenant by Josh e John Everson. Apparently this is the winner of the Bram Stoker Award. And it's sort of like a, a creepy town. Yeah. To the residents of the sleepy coastal town of Terrell, the cliffs of Terrell's Peak are a deadly place, an evil place where terrible things happen. So, is it just coincidence, or is there something evil at work? So, looks interesting. A lot of these I don't know anything about. I just saw the, I just saw the leisure fiction <laughs> uh, logo there, and I just grabbed them. Because these were all really cheap. These were all like 3 to $4 each, pretty much. So I have no idea what that's like, but looks interesting. <clears throat> Next I have some Edward Lee here. This is Monstrosity. Uh, I've read very little of Edward Lee, but um, Juan recently reviewed uh, his novel The Big Head, which sounds like an absolute wild ride. Um, this sounds pretty fun too. It's about a, a woman working at a mysterious clinic and weird shit's happening. Don't really know much about it, but it's Edward Lee, so I'm sure it'll be a pretty wild ride. I have uh, Like Death by Tim Wagoner. 
I've heard of Tim Wagoner, don't know much about him. Uh, this is about a guy who uh, witnessed uh, the brutal murder of his family as a kid, and then it's about like him as an adult, and um, it's him like sort of trying to solve a, a, a new mystery in his hometown. Seems interesting. Love that cover art. That cover art is awesome. <laughs> don't know who did that, but that's great. <laughs> I've got three books here by uh, Marianne Mitchell. <clears throat> I have Quenched. And I have, oh, this one, one is an autographed copy, uh, Tainted Blood. And <laughs> The Vampire Desaad. Um, I found, uh, so I got these because these are all part of a series that she wrote about a va the vampire Marquis de Sade and sort of the the uh, debauched things that he gets up to. Uh, I looked it up afterward, and um, this isn't the full series. There's five of them, I believe. So I'll be getting the rest and then trying these out. I actually don't even have the first one. This is the second one. Um, but I will be uh, checking those out at some point. I mean, Vampire Marquis de Sade, you know, like, how could you not? So <laughs> I look forward to that. <clears throat> this is a... Uh, Coffin County by Gary Bronbeck. Uh, I have read, um, it says here, Bram Stoker award-winning author of Mr. Hands. Uh, I had a leisure edition of Mr. Hands that I don't have anymore, unfortunately, but I read that a few years ago, and I really, really enjoyed that, so I'm interested to see what this is like. Um, this is about, like, a small town called Cedar Hill where, like, a bunch of weird shit happens, spooky things. I believe it's a recurring location in his fiction. I'll have to look into that. But, I mean, I've read Bronbeck before, and he's really good, so I'm looking forward to this. This is a oh another autographed copy here. This is What Rough Beast by H. R. Knight. Uh, this one sounds really interesting. This takes place in London in 1903, and it's about Harry Houdini and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle um, working together to expose this um, occultist. But it turns out, of course, that the occultist his magic is more real than they thought. So that sounds really really cool. Love that concept, so I look forward to reading that. And it's autographed, so cool. <clears throat> then I have The Nature of Balance by Tim Levin. Uh, I've heard a little bit about Tim Levin. He's a British author. He's winner of the British Fan World Fantasy Award. British Fantasy Award. Um, this one sounds pretty wild. Uh, one morning the world does not wake up. People lie dead in their beds, killed by their own nightmares. They're lucky. For the few remaining survivors, the new world is a confusing, terrifying place. So sort of a post-apocalyptic, sort of nature fighting back kind of thing, it looks like, maybe. People having you know, horrible nightmares and being attacked by plants, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. It sounds really weird and interesting, and I like that sort of stuff, so hope it's good. <laughs> uh, next we have good old Richard Lehman. Unfortunately, this is the only Lehman leisure paperback I was able to find, but, I mean... Come on. It's, it's Richard Lehman. You know what you're getting, right? So this is Bite. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you just need to... The, the back says it all. It's almost midnight. Cat's on the bed, face down and naked. She's Sam's former girlfriend, the only woman he's ever loved. Sam's in the closet with a hammer in one hand and a wooden stake in the other. Together they wait as the clock ticks down because the vampire's coming. So I expect it to be very... Uh, debauched and crazy and weird and probably poorly written as a lot of his stuff is but hopefully it'll be fun so that's bite we'll see <clears throat> and finally for the leisure stuff i have accidents waiting to happen by simon wood another autographed copy i don't know where all these came from they just i just found these at borderlands um this sounds sort of a it's like a guy i guess trying to track down a serial killer i don't know um, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about a lot of these because, like I said, I just saw the Leisure, Leisure logo and just grabbed them. This is uh, Accidents Waiting to Happen by Simon Wood. Hopefully that's interesting. And that's it for the Leisure stuff. And I guess now I'll just, uh, I'll just go down randomly. <clears throat> this is uh, Rats and Gargoyles by Mary Gentle. This is a uh, fantasy novel. It sounds really weird and interesting. I had to buy it because basically it's uh, it's about this big uh, city that's ruled over by sort of rat people, or the rat lords as they call them. And uh, humanity is ruled over by them. And uh, it's about the um, 
there's like this small contingency of humans that are planning a rebellion against the rat lords. I mean, a fantasy world where people are ruled over by rat people? I've got to read that, right? It sounds really weird, really fantastical and interesting and imaginative. And it's got a blurb there from Michael Moorcock, so I don't know. We'll have to check it out. Uh, this one I was really excited to find. Um, I think, I don't know if this is a part of a series. Um, it sounds like it is, but I couldn't find any information. This is uh, Children of the Dusk by Janet Berliner and George Guthridge. Um, the reason I was interested in this is that this is uh, from Borealis, which was the um, imprint of White Wolf, uh, famous for uh, their World of Darkness uh, tabletop games like Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, and as I've mentioned before on this channel, I love that stuff. And uh, I've been wanting to collect um, the Borealis stuff. They did. Uh, they had Borealis, which was their original fiction, and then they had Borealis Legends, which was a reprints of like older books, like Michael Moorcock, Fritz, Le Fritz Lieber, that kind of stuff. So I was really happy to find that. Um, hopefully I can uh, gather more. It says final book of the Madagascar Manifesto, which is why I was confused if it was part of a series. I almost didn't buy it because of that, but I mean, when am I ever going to run into this in the wild again? <laughs> so I had to grab it. I really, I honestly don't know a whole a whole lot about it. Like the fundamental the, the, in this book, which pays homage to the fundamental heroism of the human spirit, the mania of national socialism clashes with the mystique of Judaism and the mystery that is Africa. I have no idea. It sounds bonkers, so we'll see what that's like. Now I have uh, Writer of the Purple Rage by Joe R. Lansdale. This is a uh, collection of short stories by him. I believe this was his second major collection after uh, By Bizarre Hands. Um, I don't really like that cover. This is from like uh, this is from a series of reprints of his stuff that were done in the '90s for like the mass market, and they all have this kind of like generic look to them. And I don't really like that, but it was like three dollars, and I like Joe R. Lansdale. I've been wanting to read more of his short stories, so I grabbed it. Um, I have no idea what sort of stories are in here, but I like Joe R. Lansdale, so I'm sure they'll be interesting at, at the very least. Oh, Bubba Hotep's in here. There you go. I'm sold. <laughs> Bubba Hotep. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> I have uh, this, uh, The Troop, by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, this was just a totally, again, a totally random find. It's a 16-year-old pianist named George Carroll uh, who joins a vaudeville troupe, and mysterious and creepy things start happening. As I've said before, I love anything having to do with, like, circuses or vaudeville, carnivals, like, you know, troops, like anything, of, anything involving that sort of stuff I love, and that looks really cool. There's the torn... Uh, curtain and everything, so I'm I'm really hoping that's good. It looks really, really, really cool, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I have uh, jo The Serial Garden by Joan Aiken. This is the complete Armitage family stories. Um, I've read a little, I've read um, one of Joan Aiken's short story collections, uh, The People in the Castle, which is when I, how I first discovered her, and I loved that, and so I, I want to collect everything she's ever written. Um, this is a series of connected stories, obviously, about this Armitage family, and it says, uh, Because of a wish made by their mother before they were born, Mark and Harriet Armitage lead lives full of magic and strangeness. Every Monday, and occasionally on Tuesday, interesting things happen. The Board of Incantation tries to take over the family house to use as a school for young wizards. A bargain price golden apple brings a visit from the Furies. Harriet climbs an apple tree and finds herself in the land of heroes. In the title story, when Mark assembles a diorama from cutouts on a cereal box, he enters into a beautiful palace garden where an ancient and tragic mistake must be undone. So her stuff is very, uh, very fantastical, very lyrical, almost surrealist in a way. Um, very fairy tale esque, and obviously, if you if you know me, you know I love that sort of stuff. So I'm really excited to dig into this at some point. And uh, this is illustrated by uh, Andy Watson. Let me see if I can find one of them to show you here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, but you can see some of the drawings there. The ghostly governess. So yeah, looks interesting. Excited to dig into that. Uh, let's see. I got this on clearance at half price. Uh, this is uh, Underworld by Don DeLillo. Um, I believe I have Don DeLillo's White Noise, um, which is and an, which is supposed to be a classic novel of the '80s. Um, this is considered sort of his magnum opus, his masterpiece. Um, I really don't know a whole lot about it. I just know about it based on its reputation. I believe it won the National Book Award. It won something. I don't know. Um, 
but yeah, it's this it's this big big chonker. It's like 800 pages. Um, it's very postmodern from what I hear. Um, Don DeLillo uh, is probably most known uh, to the average person. Um, for writing the novel uh, Cosmopolis, which was turned into a movie by David Cronenberg with Robert Pattinson, which I haven't seen, but I love Cronenberg, so I probably will watch it at some point, probably after reading the book, but yeah, we'll see what that's like. I'm interested to dig into that. It was $4, so why not? Another uh, vintage sci-fi uh, pickup that I grabbed. This is uh, The Moat in God's Eye by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell. This is a uh, 70s um, sci-fi classic that I've heard a lot about. Um, people say it's like really sort of cosmic and transcendental, um, yeah, an epic novel of mankind's first encounter with alien life that transcends the genre. Some people say it's kind of dated, but I mean, I can live with that. I mean, it was written in the 70s, so you just got to live with that. But I've heard, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a classic, a, a great sci-fi novel. Um, I know Moid Moidelhoff from uh, Media Death Cult is a big fan of this, so I'm looking forward to digging into that eventually. This is another one I grabbed at Borderlands. This is a uh, book one of the Dragon Circle. This is Dragon Sleeping by Craig Shaw Gardner. Honestly, I was just sold based on the title and the back. The dragon slept and the dragon dreamed. And in the dragon's dream, where there once was earth and trees and homes and lives, there was nothing but fire. The dragon slept, but it will not sleep forever. I mean, that was all I needed to hear. <laughs> I, I love, I, I just loved the, the sound of that, and I love anything having to do with dragons. I've heard a little bit about Craig Shaw Gardner, don't know a whole lot, but he's he's been around, I've seen his, his name before. So hopefully that's good. And I believe there's uh, two books in this, I believe. I'll have to look it up. But So if I like it, there's there's more to come. So and just, just appreciate that cover. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> oh, another uh, Joan Aiken here that I grabbed. This is the uh, the first book in her uh, Wolves of Willoughby Chase series. This is the the, the eponymous, the Wolves of Willoughby Chase. This is a, a series of children's novels that she wrote in the 60s, I believe. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it, except it has to do with like, it's very, it's like sort of creepiness. There's wolves, there's like an evil governess. Um, yeah, Bonnie and her cousin Sylvia, there's like, like all kinds of crazy crap going on seems really interesting and as i said i love joan aiken so i'm sure i'll enjoy this well i mean i mean and like look at that cover isn't that awesome <laughs> sort of edward gory esque a little bit love it <clears throat> okay this is a, another fantasy novel that i picked up um i'd never even heard of this i'd heard of the writer but not these stories this is um the complete traveler in black by john brunner it's illustrated, apparently. Um, as I said, I've heard of John Brunner. He wrote uh, uh, Stand on Zanzibar, I believe, which uh, I haven't read, but I've heard a lot about. It's supposed to be like a sci-fi classic. Um, and I, He wrote a bunch of other things, but I can't think of them right now. Um, but this sounds interesting. It's about uh, this, the eponymous Traveler in Black who uh, travel. yeah, um, as you wish, so be it, declares the Traveler in Black, and the forces of the universe bend to his will. The spoken words of the Wisher come to be, but the results are scarcely what the Wisher really desired. Instead, the results help the world achieve order and vanquish chaos. So sort of a monkey's paw kind of thing, but like in a good way, not a bad way, not an, e not an evil way. Um, I love that sort of stuff, you know, mysterious travelers, you know, granting wishes, you know, that don't come true in the way that people expect them to. Sounds really fantastical and interesting so i'm looking forward to that eventually and uh let's see the rest of these are all vintage horror novels so i'll get to those in a bit we'll, we'll start off with this is i was really really excited to find this um at a i found this is one of the ones i got from dog-eared books um this is edward ed wood nightmare of ecstasy the life and art of edward d wood jr by rudolph gray this is a famous um biography of Ed Wood that was the basis for the Tim Burton film. Um, I've been wanting to find a copy ever since I first heard about it when I watched, uh, there's the um, Flying, oh, what was it? Flying Saucers Over California, I think it's called, um, which was a documentary that was made in the 90s about Ed Wood. It was uh, included on the Ed Wood DVD, and I, I watched that to death when I was a, a teenager, and I loved it. And uh, they spoke with Rudolph Gray, and they showed this book a lot, and, I, and I, I've always been trying to find it. And I just so happened to run into it at this store, so I grabbed it immediately. Uh, it sounds really interesting. It's full of, like, uh, sort of uh, testimonials from the people that he worked with. You see Conrad Brooks there, you know, Carl Anthony, like all, all the people in his life that he worked with, and it's all just them talking about him and his life. So really looking forward to that. That sounds really, really interesting. Oh, another uh, Robert Jackson Bennett here. 
Um, I grabbed this just because it was mentioned on the back of the troop. Uh, Mr. Shivers, nobody can cheat death. Um, this, I believe, won the Bram Stoker Award or was nominated, I have to check. But it sounds really interesting. Uh, it, is the t it is the time of the Great Depression. Thousands have left their homes looking for a better life, a new life. But Marcus Connolly is not one of them. He searches for one thing, and one thing only, revenge. Because out there, riding the rails, stalking the camps, is the scarred vagrant who murdered Connolly's daughter. One man must face a dark truth and answer the question, how much is he willing to sacrifice for his satisfaction? So yeah, it sounds really creepy and atmospheric. I love the, the Great Depression setting, and it sounds like there's some, some supernatural elements to it, so should be really, really interesting. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> And then the rest of these that I have here, these are all, um, well, most of them are uh, vintage horror novels that I grabbed from Half Price. Um, as I mentioned before, Half Price, or maybe I didn't mention before, I don't remember, Half Price was selling a bunch of uh, vintage horror novels uh, for the Halloween season. A lot of them were being sold for collector's prices, so I didn't grab a lot. But I grabbed a few here. <clears throat> um, one of them was the... Uh, the um, Swan Song, as I mentioned, but the rest of these uh, I'll show right now. Um, the first one I have here is Crusader's Torch by Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough, an historical horror novel. To love a woman is a dangerous thing when that woman is a vampire in a world of death and destruction. So yeah, it's uh, sort of a, yeah, it takes place in 1189 AD. Uh, war is raging all around the Mediterranean. And it's about this woman named Ada Olivia Clemens, you know, which, you know, I guess she's like a vampire and it's like sort of, it's like historical and it sounds really weird and interesting. It's a Tor horror book and I love all the, st I love their cover art. They always have really cool cover art, as you can see there. I know uh, Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough has a series of books that all focus on, I think his name is St. Germain, I believe. Uh, he's a vamp, he's like an immortal vampire, and there's a bunch of books sort of focusing on his character and his life. I don't know if this is part of that, but I, this does involve vampires, so I assume it's probably connected in some way, but it just sounds cool. Like, I, I've, never read a, I've never heard of a vampire novel taking place in the Middle Ages, which sounds really interesting. So, and... Yeah, I, I love that cover. Check that out. All the herald, heraldic, heraldic stuff, you know, the shields and everything. Love that. Oh, this one I was really, really happy to find. This, this one is super, super rare. Uh, this is uh, Halloween 2 by Jack Martin. This is the novelization of the John Carpenter film, as you can see there. A John Carpenter, Deborah Hill production. Um, I got this for $12 at a half price. And I looked it up afterward, and uh, the cheapest I could find it for was like $55, and then it was being sold for like upwards of like $100, 150 So, I mean, it's a little beat up, you know, there's a crease there, some, you know, stuff, but, I mean, for $12, I was really, really happy to get that. And it's, yeah, it's a Zebra movie tie-in. Zebra is another publisher from, mostly known for their 80s horror paperbacks, so... I was really, really happy to find that. I don't know much about the author, Jack Martin. I believe that was a pseudonym, but I could be wrong. But yeah, I was just really, really happy to find that. Uh, I have no idea if it's any good or not, but it's it's highly sought after by <laughs> vintage horror collectors, and that cover art is just the bomb, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. So I was really, really happy to get that. <clears throat> Another zebra horror here. This is um, Moon Death by Rick Hodela. I honestly don't know much about this. Um, I know a little bit about Rick Hodela. I believe he's also from Maine, hence the, the Stephen King quote. One of the best horror novels I've read in the last two years. <laughs> well, two years isn't a very long time, King, but <laughs> um, I know he died recently. Um, he's sort of an unsung member of the whole paperback horror community. Um, I think I may have a couple other of his books, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look. But I wanted to get this one because it's a werewolf novel. Um, it's about, you know, a mysterious creature killing people in a small, quiet New Hampshire town called Cooper Falls. And, uh, of course, me being a werewolf lover, I had to grab that. So, <laughs> there you go. That's Moon Death by Rick Hodela. Another werewolf novel here. Um, I was actually really happy to find this because I believe this is sort of rare. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But <clears throat> this is uh, The Dark Cry of the Moon by Charles L. Grant. Um, I know this, uh, this is a, uh, werewolf novel that takes place in Charles L. Grant's, um, fictional town of Ox Run Station. Um, he had several books, uh, set in that place. 
a few other ones that they had here at the um, half price, but I didn't grab any because they were expensive and I didn't even know where to start. But I had to get this because, as I said, it's a werewolf novel. If it's a werewolf novel, I gotta read it. I've heard a lot of good things about Charles L. Grant. He was sort of a... Uh, he was a, a proponent of uh, quiet horror, I guess you'd say, so more about atmosphere and chills rather than blood and gore, which I don't mind, I think can be interesting as long as it's done well. And, I mean, you got to love that classic Wolfman-style Lon Chaney Jr. cover art. <laughs> love that, so hopefully this is good. Looking forward to digging into that eventually. This is another one I was really, really happy to find, and again, this is also collectible. Um, this is uh, The Amulet by Michael McDowell. A novel of pure terror. Whoever possesses it must kill and be killed. I've heard a lot about this ever since first reading a review of it on um, Will Erickson's blog, Too Much Horror Fiction. And I, I've always wanted to track down a copy of it. I know it was reprinted a few times. I know Valancourt uh, put out an edition of it. But I just, I really wanted the, uh, the original Avon paperback edition just because, I mean, I, I love that cover art. All the people tied up by the chains of the amulet. And that basically tells you what the book is about. It's, um... This uh, mysterious uh, pendant on a glittering golden chain that shows up in this town in Alabama called Pinecone. And uh, it's about the amulet passing from person to person and how it affects their mind and forces them to engage in their dark side, their darkest desires. So it sounds really, really cool. Um, I actually mentioned it recently in Juan's live stream about the fog because it's sort of a similar idea where it's about sort of a supernatural or like a horrific entity sort of bringing out the dark side of humanity. Heard a lot about it. I've read a little bit of Michael McDowell, and I really like him. He was a great writer. Um, I have a bunch more of his books I need to read, but I, I'm really excited to get to this. So there you go. That's The Amulet. This one was a little expensive. This was like 20 bucks, But, I mean, I looked up some prices uh, online afterward, and that was a pretty decent price to get it for, so I'm happy to have that now. It's a little beat up, but I, I'll, I'll be careful with it. So, And finally... Uh, this one is a newer book. This is a, Well, this is a reprint from New York Review of Books. This is Ghosts by Edith Wharton. Um, yeah, she's probably more well-known for her like more literary novels, like, you know, The Age of Innocence and The House of Mirth and that kind of stuff. But she also wrote a bunch of ghost stories. Um, this isn't all of her ghost stories, but these were all selected by her. These were her favorites. Um, I've never read any of her stuff. Not even I haven't read any of her novels. I haven't read any of her short stories. But a friend of mine recommended one of her stories which is in this collection called the eyes which sounds really really cool it's about a guy getting like haunted by a pair of eyes that have this weird like sort of butterfly pattern to them sounds really creepy and surreal so i'll be very very interested to dig into that and it's um, like i said it's new york review of books and they always do these really beautiful uh reprints that i really really like so i'm excited to dig into that <laughs> so there you go there's my uh spooky halloween haul um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you've read any of these, let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, where should I start? <laughs> what do you recommend? Uh, which one of these did you enjoy? Um, let me know. Get a, get a dialogue going. So, And if you liked the video, you know, comment, like, subscribe, all that good shit. Uh, and I will see you guys later. I will probably have a video out tomorrow for how... Well, I'm going to have this out on Halloween. And I'm going to try and get my October book haul out either tomorrow or November 1st. If it's a little late, it's okay. But uh, until then, uh, stay spooky, and I will see you guys later. Bye!